Hey guys, welcome to uh, D20 Sundays. I've put off putting on this video for a while now. <laughs> Whew. Uh, mm. uh, so first off, if you like any of the content that I have provided thus far or in this video, please like and subscribe. Secondly, this is your spoiler warning for uh, episode 26 of Critical Role. Uh, if you have not watched that episode, go watch it now. This is your only spoiler warning. Uh... Hold on, I need to check these. Okay, yeah, sorry. I'm uploading videos at the moment, and it's like 10.30 at night, and this is literally the only time I can record at the moment because of my son. So, uh, but on to the video. Uh, as I said, you know, this is your spoiler warning. If you haven't watched uh, Critical Role's episode 26, go do that now. I'll wait. I normally don't like doing videos and references to other people's content because I feel like I'm trying to leech or, you know, ride their skirt tail you know, into my own glory and so on. I, I don't want to do that. So, for all of you Critical Role fans out there, uh, thank you for watching, for one. Uh, but also, I understand a lot of you are upset. I mean, I was kind of upset too when I saw it. Whew. And some of you guys knew before I did, because I can only see it on YouTube. I, I'm at work during the actual campaign, so I can't watch it live. So imagine how it felt. I had to stay off Twitter for a few days until I could actually watch the episode. Yeah. Thank you, guys. So, your final spoiler warning has been given. Molly Mock, or Molly, is dead. His character died at the end of episode 26 at a very, uh, tough moment. Uh, sure, there might have been some, you know, mechanics made wrong or, you know, misinterpreted or things were forgotten but that's how Dungeons and Dragons works it's as simple as that no one is perfect when it comes to knowing the rules I honestly don't know all the rules and I sometimes mess up myself I'm sure Matt Mercer is the same and he needs to be reminded but it is how it is and Molly's character in all honesty was already well developed and I feel like almost completely fleshed out aside from his storyline um uh, he had pretty much how his worldview and everything was already figured out, and he knew how he wanted to be. So, that worked out pretty well. Now, as far as everyone else, uh, eh, you know, they could have done some things better, but, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. <laughs> you know, there, no one's at fault. The DM's not at fault. The player's is not at fault. Um, honestly, they were put into a difficult situation, and... Talison or Molly's uh, player, was uh, given a difficult choice, and he got the rough end of the stick. But it's just how it is. You see, in Dungeons & Dragons, characters die. I myself have been through hundreds of characters, from dying from the simplest of things, such as uh, drinking too many potions at one time in 1st edition. Yeah, you can die from that. I've died from careening off the side of a cliff because I failed an acrobatics check done that. I have died from setting myself on fire in a explosive warehouse. Done that. Uh, I have died from being hit by a stone giant when I was already pretty weakened and uh, I was a squishy squishy mage. Yep. I have died multiple ways in Dungeons and Dragons because it happens. You just kind of like, well, I'll just roll up a new character. And it's pretty much how you have to take it, you know. Your characters can mean a lot to you and to the fans, and that's also important. I hope to one day be, you know, where the Seriskin campaign is meaning a lot to the viewers and, you know, people are more attached to the characters. But that is neither here nor there. Critical Role is there, though. They are at that point to where everyone's character that's played, you know, be it Not, Yasha, uh, Bo, Four, Jester, you know, Caleb, or just look at all of them. You know, they're really good. They are, you know, not only phenomenal voice actors, but they give such depth and character to their characters that you feel like you're actually sitting there with them, playing this game, or watching them play, and it's one of the best things ever. But that being said, characters die. They all die at some point. I mean, come on, you know, remember in C uh, the first campaign, uh, was it Vax or Vex that died? Scanlan died? Sure, they came back, but 
it's just kind of how things work. Characters die. Uh, in 5th edition, it's a little harder to kill your characters, to be honest, because of stuff like Healing Word. It's a bonus section to cast, and it heals 1d4, plus some other things, depending on what you are. Um, but that's just kind of how it works. And honestly, Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition made it a lot easier to keep characters alive, but at the same time, a lot easier to kill them once they are down. And when it came to that final scene in episode 26, the villain was presented with an option. He could either turn away from his unconscious opponent and possibly risk the opponent rising again at some point and challenging him again, or you could silence the opponent, ensuring that it will never rise again to face him. And unfortunately for Molly, that was the choice that the villain made. And honestly, it's the choice that makes sense. So, yeah, you know, be as upset as you want about it, but that is the choice that makes the most sense when it comes to that exact situation. An intelligent villain who sees an opponent go down would make sure that they are dead so that way they could never rise in that same encounter. Because what if one of the other characters got to Molly and slipped him a potion? Well, then, lo and behold, Molly's back on his feet and can cause more trouble for, you know... For you as the villain. So, it makes sense that that happened. It sucks. Trust me, it sucks. I mean, it sucks whenever your character dies. But at the same time, it makes the most sense. And we have to accept that. We're not the DM, and we're not the players. We're simply people watching this amazing show with these great voice actors and these great people that are playing together, these friends who are playing together. And while it does feel like we're friends and that we're part of the, you know, the show sometimes, we have to accept the fact that we can only watch and not interfere. So, with that being said, uh, I hope I ripped the band-aid off, but not in a sense that hurts too much. Uh... But you gotta remember also, it's Dungeons and Dragons. It's a game meant to be fun. And if the game makes you sad, well, that means it also gave you something really good. And that made you as equally happy. Anyways, that's it for this episode. Catch you next time. Oh, and uh, before I forget, DM's Corner, which was a subpart of D20 Sundays, is now being moved to where D20 Sundays is purely going to be these story videos like this and, you know, just pure discussion. And the DM's Corner is going to be all about helping Dungeon Masters and it's going to be throughout the week uh, as soon as I get the next series of videos for it up and going, which is going to be all about building your campaign world and building your, essentially, your homebrew, role, homebrew world and your campaign. Uh... I just got to get all that written out and prepared for you because for the Sariskin campaign, I, uh, there's this whole story behind that. So anyways, catch you next time. Laters.